Hey, time out. Are all religions the same? Short answer is yes, because you all have to believe on faith rather than evidence because there is no good evidence for the things you believe. That's what makes you all the same. Waffle guy, a lot of you's in there. Hey, time out. All religions have one thing in common. They are all made up. Peter, have you met Waffle guy? Time out. All religions fail to meet their burden of proof for their claims about their God. Well, Richard, while you're making friends with Baffle and Peter, we're gonna go ahead and examine the world's two largest religions to see if indeed all religions are the same. Hey everyone, my name is Josh. Welcome to Overtime, a series of videos where we look at some of the most popular comments in the comment section on our Time Out series, and we do a deep dive to unpack the conversation a bit more and have some dialogue. If you're a Christian watching this video, we hope you'll walk away feeling encouraged about your faith. And if you're not a believer, we hope you'll at least better understand the positions we hold and why we believe them. In one of our Time Out episodes, we talked about whether all religions are the same or not. You see, one of the most common things you hear in today's world is, well, that's your truth, or that might work for you, but it's not for me. But not all truth is, well, true. So today, we're analyzing Christianity and Islam and looking at some of the differences and similarities between them. Muslims have six major beliefs. Belief in one God, which is Allah. Belief in the angels. Belief in the holy books sent to all of the prophets, including the Torah that was revealed to the prophet Moses, the Bible that was revealed to the prophet Jesus, and the Quran, which was revealed to the prophet Muhammad. Additionally, there's belief in all of the prophets sent by God, including Noah, Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad. So although Muslims believe in Isa, or Jesus, they don't think of Jesus as the Son of God the way that Christians do. In addition to these six beliefs, there's what's known as the five pillars in Islam. The Shahada, which is the declaration of faith, that there is no God except the one God, Allah, and Muhammad is his prophet or messenger. The Salat, which is the ritual prayers, the five daily prayers that are usually performed at dawn, noon, mid-afternoon, sunset, and night. And these prayers are usually offered in the Arabic language and facing the direction of Mecca. The Zakah, which is the alms tax, or giving two and a half percent of one's wealth to the poor and needy. And Psalm, which is fasting. Muslims fast during the daylight hours in the ninth month of the Islamic lunar calendar called Ramadan. The purpose is to remind people of the goodness of what they have and to show equality with the poor. And finally, there's the Hajj, which is the pilgrimage. A Muslims believe in making a pilgrimage to Mecca, to the Kaaba, at least once in their lifetime if possible. The Kaaba is believed to have been built by Ibrahim or Abraham and one of his sons. And Muhammad restored it to worship Allah. For this reason, it's a very sacred place to Muslims. And Muslims believe that the last scripture sent by God is the Quran. It's the speech of God revealed in the Arabic language to Muhammad during his mission of 23 years. The Quran was written down by scribes and memorized during the lifetime of Muhammad. The Quran itself emphasizes moral, ethical, and spiritual values with the aim of establishing justice for everyone. And the Sunnah, in addition to the Quran, is a record of Muhammad's words and deeds. The Sunnah is used to help interpret the Quran, and there's also instruction in it on belief, worship, and behavior. Now, when we look at Christianity, we see that Christians believe that Jesus Christ was the Son of God, fully human, fully divine. Jesus died for humanity, and that God raised Jesus from the dead, and that Jesus will come again at the end time. In in addition to this, Christians believe in the Trinity or God revealing himself in three distinct forms that operate as one Godhead. You have God the Father or Creator, God the Son, Jesus or the Redeemer, and God the Holy Spirit or Sanctifier. The sacred text of Christianity is what's called the Holy Bible. The Bible has two parts, the Old Testament, which is essentially the Hebrew scriptures of Jesus' time, and the New Testament, which contains writings about Jesus Christ and the early church. The four gospels or the, of the New Testament are accounts of Jesus' life and teaching of his death and his resurrection. Well, the New Testament also contains the Acts of the Apostles, which describes the early growth of the Christian church, the letters of Paul, and other important leaders in the early church. The New Testament teaches that salvation comes through believing in the death and physical resurrection of Jesus Christ and in following his teachings. Christianity and Islam actually share quite a bit in common. They both come from the Abrahamic religions, which are Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. They both believe in a monotheistic God. Moreover, Islam and Christianity both share importance for the person of Jesus, the Bible, and being holy people. However, among the similarities are sharp contrasts that must be examined and talked through. So now we're gonna to turn to some of the differences between the two central figures of Christianity and Islam, that is Jesus and Muhammad, all right? Jesus is born of a virgin. Muhammad is born naturally. Both the Quran and the scriptures affirm this. Jesus is biblically literate and spiritually mature. Muhammad, according to the Quran, comes from a pagan family and is illiterate. Jesus is poor, he has nowhere to lay his head. Muhammad took spoils of war, 20% for himself. Jesus performed miracles, showing power over life and death. And Muhammad didn't do miracles like Jesus. In fact, it states that his only performed miracle is the reception of the Quran. 
Quran. Jesus forgave the immoral, and Muhammad had stoned and whipped an adulteress. Depending on how you read that text, Jesus was sinless according to both the Quran and the Bible. And the Quran actually says Muhammad was sinful. Jesus died for sinners. Muhammad killed sinners. Jesus rose according to the Bible, and Muhammad is dead still according to the Quran. And there's one other aspect that's worth mentioning here their views about Jesus' crucifixion. Christianity affirms the resurrection as a historical event using multiple criteria. The criterion of embarrassment, uh, multiple attestation, coherence, etc. However, Islam often rejects the notion of the crucifixion in its entirety. The Surah An-Nisa states that in both that they killed Christ Jesus, the son of Mary, the messenger of Allah, but they killed him not, nor crucified him, but it was made to appear to them, and those who differ therein are full of doubts, with no certain knowledge, but only conjecture to follow. For a surety, they killed him not. Nay, Allah raised him up unto himself, and Allah is exalted in power wise. You see, if this is the case, this is incredibly problematic, because it implies that Allah intentionally misled people to believe that one of his messengers was dead when he wasn't. This is a lie. Worse still is that Allah did such a good job with this deception that the disciples bought into the lie and promulgated it to people and spread it across continents for 600 years before Islam entered the picture to correct Allah's first mistake. And technically, Allah still failed as Christianity continues to be the world's most popular religion. This leaves us with an irreconcilable difference between the God of the Quran and the God of Christianity. You see, while Christianity and Islam share similarities at the core, there are irreconcilable differences between the two religions. And as such, it's wise to continue to do your research and see where you land on these issues. Until next time, thank you so much and we'll see you in the comments.